everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. In this video today, I am going to be demonstrating how to sew thread loops. I'm going to be demonstrating four different ways, two by hand and two by machine. Let's go ahead and get started. To make a thread loop by hand, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a thread chain. So you want to grab a needle and some thread. I have it double threaded here, as you can see, and I have a knot on the end. I'm using this piece of scrap fabric as a demo, and this right here would be the right side of my fabric, and this would be the inside. So I have it folded so that you would still be able to get up under your seam allowance here. And so from there, you will want to start up under your seam allowance if possible. So I'm just gonna come up up under the seam. Again, this would be the seam allowance, the right side of our garment, and I'm just going to pull the thread through like so. Now that we have it through, I'm just gonna come back to where we came out at and just pick up a small bite of the fabric right at the base here. And I'm gonna start pulling that through. But before we completely pull it through, I am going to grab this loop here that's starting to form. I'm gonna put it between my thumb and four fingers like so. So again, I didn't pull it all the way through, I just stopped it there, so now I have this loop. And so now what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to bring the needle thread through, holding that, and I'm going to pull it down, and this is gonna create a knot down at the base, and now we also have another loop, still holding this thread over here with the needle. And so now again, I'm just gonna pull that down some just to have more control. I'm gonna reach through and grab the thread, the one that has the needle on it. I'm gonna bring that through and I'm only pulling that thread and that's gonna create a knot for us. Again, that's gonna go down to the base. So the knots are attaching down here. This is gonna create our thread chain. Let's continue. Again, I'm just gonna pull a little bit to get some control and I'm just gonna pull it through like so. Now, depending on which hand is more comfortable for you, you may need to switch hands. For me, I find it easier if I have my loop in my right hand, and then I can just pull through a lot easier because that's my more dominant hand. And so again, I have my forefinger and my thumb creating a loop, pulling it down for more control, pulling it through, and not. As you can see, you start to get a little thread chain here building up. You want to continue doing that motion until you get the length of the thread chain that you need. Maybe you're gonna be sliding a tie belt through it. You want that tie belt to be able to go through smoothly. So you just continue with that same motion until you have the thread loop the length that you need. So let's continue. Okay, so let's say that this here is the length of the thread chain that you need. So let's go ahead and secure this. And what you do not want to do is to just pull on the thread here that has the needle attached. That will just cause the whole thread chain to begin to unravel and we don't want that. So to secure this, you want to pull on this thread here that has the needle attached and we're gonna just bring it all the way through. and that gives us our final knot. So from here, you just want to pull this through and secure it again up under your seam allowance. So I'm just gonna pull this through, and again, let's just say that this is where we would have our marking at for our thread chain. Just pull that back through your seam allowance. And then inside of here on your seam allowance, you can just secure your thread chain in place. You can put a couple knots, maybe one, maybe two or three, just to secure that in place. Go ahead and cut your thread. And you have just created a thread chain here. Now that we've done the thread chain loop, let's go ahead and do a buttonhole loop. Okay, let's go ahead and do a thread loop for a buttonhole. So for this one, I am going to bring my needle through, again, I have my needle threaded here, double threaded, and it is knotted. I'm going to bring my needle through from the wrong side, and then I'm going to bring that through, make sure I have it all through. 
I'm gonna bring it down to where I'm going to end my loop and I'm just gonna pick up a small bite of the fabric. I'm gonna pull that through, but before I pull it all the way through, I'm gonna leave a loop like that. So there's the loop. Before I pull it all the way through, I'm gonna leave a loop. So now I'm gonna go back to where we started, pick up a small bite of the fabric, and I'm gonna pull that through. And I want it to be the same size as this one here. So I'm just gonna pull that through. And then I'm gonna go back to where it's going to end. And I'm gonna pull that through here. And pull it through. Again, I want it to match this loop here. So we have our loop. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off. To tie it off, I'm just gonna pick up a stitch here, create a knot, can loop that through a couple times to secure that like so. And now I'm gonna clip this off. Okay, and now I'm gonna re-thread my needle. Okay, I have this needle here single threaded. And so what we're gonna do is coming back here to our loops. I will say for these loops that we've already made, you can add more threads if you like. It all depends on the level of thickness that you want here for your buttonhole loop. So you can do more or less, again, depending on how many loops here and how thick you want this to be. So taking our needle here that's single threaded, I'm gonna begin up here at the starting point. So I'm just gonna bring my needle through and we're gonna begin working left to right using a blanket stitch. So I'm gonna come under our loop here and pull the thread through. This is gonna create a knot here and I want the knot to begin close to the starting point. So I'm just gonna pull it over there and knot it. And so now we're gonna continue repeating those steps doing a blanket stitch. Again, working left to right, I'm coming under the loop but I'm not going under the single thread. So it's like a under the loop, but do not go under the single thread. Pull that through, and again, I'm pulling it over so that the knot builds on top of the previous knot. I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to build. It's starting to build right here. I'm gonna continue going under the loops and making sure I do not go under the main thread and just pulling it over so that it stacks with the previous knot. Okay, so I just wanted to check in here. I am just about done with my button loop here. And just to go over the steps again, we are going through the loop and over the thread. Through the loop, over the thread. Once you finish up your loop, and I did get a little wonky with mine at a few different points, but definitely keep practicing that blanket stitch. But once you are done with your loop, then you can just tie this off gonna create a knot along the back of the fabric. Okay, now that you have knotted off your threads, now you have a buttonhole loop. This is what it looks like along the back. If you can still get under your seam allowance there to start your loops, that would be fantastic and it'd be a great way to hide your knots here along the back. But if not, this is what that will look like. And again, this is for your buttonhole and I do recommend practicing that blanket stitch a couple times. And that is all for your buttonhole loop. And now let's go ahead and make some loops using the sewing machine. To get started doing a thread loop by machine, first you want to cut four to six strands of thread a little longer than what is needed for the loop. So here I have six pieces of thread and I've just made them really long. Again, if you're gonna be putting this on your garment, make sure that it's longer than what is needed for your loop. Now let's head to the sewing machine with our threads. The first thing that we want to do is pull up the bobbin thread from the machine. So I'm just going to roll my hand wheel here to get my bobbin thread up. Okay, I have my bobbin thread pulled up here. And I'm gonna pull these through with our top needle thread. So find your top needle thread here. I'm gonna put that under my presser foot and toward the back. And then I'm gonna take our threads and place it back here with the top needle thread. From here, I'm going to drop my presser foot and we are going to do a zigzag stitch over all of the threads. 
I'm gonna shorten down the length of my zigzag stitch. My default is a 4.0. I'm gonna drop it down to a 3.0. I have my threads lined up with the center of my presser foot. I'm going to drop my presser foot now and I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch over the threads. Okay, here is a look at our thread chain that we just made using our sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. Okay, let's go ahead and attach it onto our garment. You want to grab a large eye needle, that way we can put all of our threads through. Okay, I used a large eye needle, so I'm going to bring this through the right side. And now we can knot this here along the inside of our garment. Pull it through. Again, this would be on the right side of our garment. And now you want to thread the other end. And then you would pull it through however long you need your thread loop to be. I'm just gonna place this one here for this demo, bring it through, make a knot here with your thread, and you have just created a really nice thread loop here using some threads and a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Let's go ahead and make another loop using a serger. To do a thread loop using your serger, first you want to set up your serger to do a rolled hem. So I'm just going to set mine up. If you're not sure how to do yours, please refer to your serger manual. With your presser foot down, you want to go ahead and start stitching. And we're going to stitch to the desired length that you need for your thread loop. So again, according to however long you need it to be for your tie to go through or for your button to fit over, that is how long we're going to do our stitch for. Okay, once you have the length that you need, go ahead and clip your thread. And now we can go ahead and put this onto our garment. For our serger loop, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the sewing machine one. You want to grab a large eye needle and thread it with your loop that you made with your serger. Your loop may look a little different from mine depending on the settings on your serger machine. Okay, now that you have it threaded, you wanna take it from the right side to the wrong side. So again, if you're able to get into your seam allowance, that would be fantastic to help hide your knots. So I'm just putting this in here as though this is our seam allowance here. So you would just put that through like so. Once you pull it through, you can just tie a knot to knot it off. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that off. And again, that's all hidden in our seam allowance. And so for the other side, you would do the same thing. Go ahead and thread it. Once you have the other end threaded, then you can put it to wherever your marking is on your garment for where the end of it needs to go. For the demo, I'm just gonna put it here. But again, make sure that you are putting it where it needs to be on your garment. Go ahead and pull the rest of it through. Cut your thread. And again, all of this would be hidden in our seam allowance. And so we have just made a thread loop with the serger. We've made a thread loop with our sewing machine. We've done a buttonhole loop here using a blanket stitch. And we've also done another thread loop here by hand. I hope you've enjoyed this demo for doing thread loops. Well, that is all for the demo, and I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you would like to see more how-to sewing videos, you can check out the playlist here on YouTube up under our how-to section, or you can head on over to simplicity.com and watch them there. Until next time, blessings everyone. Bye.